CataractCoach.com. We've got a special case here today from Dr. Eric Ojun Oda from Brazil. It's a patient with nystagmus, dense cataracts, ocular albinism. Here's the pre-op exam. You can see that extreme nystagmus, very dense cataracts. You can see the pale eyelashes and the lack of pigmentation. This is ocular albinism. And you can see extensive cataracts, very dense nuclear sclerotic cataracts. So we're going to watch him do this expert level cataract surgery and see what we can learn. Wow, that's a dense cataract. We've sped up the surgical video about two times normal speed just to get through the whole thing. Good look at incisions there. Now I'm going to stay in that capsule, the tripan blue dye. Now for anesthesia, you probably want to do, if you can, a retrobulbar block. It can make life a lot easier, help really minimize some of those uh, eye movements. So you can see there's the dilation, not the best dilation, and a dense cataract like this, very important to make a sufficiently large capsorexis. Do not make the baby rexis. So let's see, stabbing in here with the forceps, getting that flap turned over, looking good. Nice, generous capsule rexis. This is important. A little amputation of it there, which is of no consequence. You can go back in there, re-grab that same spot, and continue. You definitely want an intact capsule rexis for a case like this, and you definitely want a big capsule rexis. With a really dense brunescent cataract, I don't mind, even if it's a six millimeter capsule rexis, even if it doesn't perfectly overlap the optic. It's just much easier to get a dense cataract out of the capsule bag, especially when you have that much nuclear sclerosis. So let's see what he's doing next. Some hydrodissection, perhaps. Again, be careful here. It's hard to see the fluid wave go behind the lens nucleus because it's so opaque. So you don't want to put too much pressure in that capsular bag. So it looks like a little bit more viscoelastic dispersive agent there. And let's watch the technique. This is the first time I'm watching the video, so we're watching it together. All right, two choppers going inside the eye to rotate it. That's kind of, that's a very helpful maneuver. And now the two choppers are going to the equators. And wow, chopping the nucleus just like that. Beautiful separation. So the technique of using two choppers, 180 degrees opposite each other. So you've trapped that nucleus between the two chopper tips and boom, you know, put it together and you can split that nucleus. And you don't need holding power because you're absolutely lining these exactly opposite each other. Again, two choppers and really able to help break apart this very dense cataract. Now these chops may not go fully through and that's okay because there can be a dense posterior plate. But now at least you have some sort of uh, chop, some sort of cracking of the, the dense nucleus so you can bring pieces up. There you go, that looks like a pretty good piece. And then again, sub-chopping it. And another sub-chop, oh, little touch of the iris there, no big deal. That's a really nice technique. So you definitely want to do more and more chops because this is a fibrous cataract. It's kind of the fibers are stuck together. You can have a hard time having those clean, simple chops or breaks. So you have to be persistent like uh, Dr. Erico is doing here. Beautiful job. And then chop, 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 and still the pieces tend to be stuck together. This is a very tough case. And he's doing a good job. Let's see what's happening now, moving the pieces around. Now, I know you're a little bit in the anterior chamber. That's okay. For a case like this, you're going to have to do that. Use more dispersive agents if you want. Notice how he's got that bevel down position, which you see me do as well. I think that works really nicely. And he's really trying to work at that iris plane. And despite being such a dense cataract, you're going to be surprised. He has a post-op video at the end of the case where you'll see the cornea is clear on post-op day one. And on post-op day seven, even better. So here are the last bits of these pieces. And again, even if there is some corneal edema, that's okay to resolve. Here's more dispersive viscoelastic. See, that's a smart move. Finally, a red reflex is coming through. Using that chopper to push the pieces centrally into the deeper part of the anterior chamber in the center, it's gonna be a lot easier to use the phaco probe to take the pieces down when they're not trapped in the angle. So probe going back in the eye. And remember, this iris that's lacking pigment also has a little bit more laxity to it, maybe more floppiness to it. You gotta be careful with that. So let's take out these last couple of pieces here. Chop, chop, and chop. And the pupils come down now. That's gonna make it a little more challenging, a little tougher. But that's okay. Just gonna take his time there. Stay centrally. Be careful not to aspirate or catch any of the iris in the phaco port. So pieces go down real nice and easy. 
And there you go. If you are going to do general anesthesia for a patient like this, and I don't think you really need to, but if you are, it may behoove you to do both cataracts the same day. So bilateral, sequential cataracts, where you're treating each eye as a separate patient. And that way the patient can undergo general anesthesia just once, and you can get both eyes done at the same sitting. Now in a case like this, obviously you're gonna put a monofocal lens in. In a case like this, there's gonna be probably foveal hypoplasia, limited best ability, to, uh, best corrected visual acuity. So I'd put in a monofocal lens, aim for plano or close to plano, maybe a little myopic, half diopter or so. And now, cleaning up the cortex, he's using that chopper to look under the iris, and you've seen me do that as well. I like that technique, just to make sure there's no retained lens material in the caps or bag. There are a couple little nuclear chips floating around. He'll get those out, those are no big deal. There's that one chip you can just push in the port and, or just like that, pull it out of the eye. Here comes the viscoelastic, and that lens is gonna go in the capsule bag. Important here to really inflate the capsule bag with the viscoelastic. You want a deep capsule bag, expand it open, not just a deep anterior chamber. Deliver that lens inside, looks like a nice single piece monofocal acrylic lens, and get that in the capsule bag, and then lift up the iris to be sure to, to check again. So he's dialing that in, and let's see, centering up the lens. And there's that last little fragment, and then I would again lift up the iris just to make sure that lens is underneath the rexus. And I'm pretty sure it is. There you go, now he's checking. There it is, under the rexus, now you're sure of it. You don't want that lens to be in the sulcus, as you know, that'll cause scraping of the back of the iris and lots of problems. So beautiful, get that arch back inside the eye and you can seal up the incision. That was really well done. That's a tough, tough case. And Dr. Erico Junota from Brazil did a fantastic job. Really, really liked the technique here. Sealing up the incisions here at the end. And let's look at the post-op picks. Make sure that lens is centered. Here you go, post-op. So coin looks pretty good, lens in good position. You see the nystagmus? Excellent, so excellent outcome there. And let's see the other eye. Oh, there's that dense cataract. That one's up next. So good job. Thanks for submitting the video. I really enjoyed watching it. And check out cataractcoach.com.